be brief. Uh, you all know who Senator Marco Rubio is. He's really our foremost freedom champion. It doesn't really belong to us. It belongs to the Venezuelan people through their legitimate government to determine what the future holds. And we're there to support them in whatever they need and ask for. But there really isn't a plan B. There doesn't have to be. There's only one plan, and that is Maduro leaves. And the only thing being debated is what is the format in which he leaves, what are the conditions under which he leaves, when does he leave, and where does he go. Uh, does he leave uh, as a prisoner, or does he leave as, a, as an exile? But that he will leave, there's no doubt. Thank you very much. I wore my tie today, too. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. Roger Noriega from American Enterprise Institute. With, this is an irreversible process we are on now. Okay? There is no way the U.S. or 50-some-odd countries are going to re-recognize Maduro after everything that's happened. So I would just say three weeks is too long. But in the, in the, in the course of world history, three weeks is a blip on the screen. These things sometimes take longer, because as long as you're willing to jail murder, and murder people, you'd be surprised at how long people may be able to hold on. But this is an irreversible route. There is no way that he survives, and there is no way that this goes back to the way it was. Uh, he will not be able to buy time to escape this time. There's just too much attention now. Supreme Court, uh, legitimate Supreme Court of Venezuela have uh, talked. There does come a moment, and one of those moments is coming up right now. It is a violation of international law. For, for the armed forces of a country to deny the delivery of humanitarian assistance to civilians. And that is what they are doing, and that's what they are seem postured to do. And if they do that, they are violating international law. And, and how those five or six key military leaders respond in, over the next week and a half to that question is going to determine where and how they and their families will spend the rest of their lives. It, it, this is the most, most important decision they have ever made in their life, and, and they're, they're about to be forced to make it. What do you recommend the United States should do in regards to what happened to Maduro and his... If you told me tomorrow that the price of Venezuela having a better future is that five or six terrible human beings get to move to Cuba or South Africa or Moscow uh, for the rest of their lives, I think it's unfortunate that some of them may not face justice, but if it saves the lives of millions of people, um, you know, that's one of those very difficult trade-offs. But there comes a point where you cross the line and that opportunity won't be there for you. And, um, and, and that's what they're going to have to decide. Please keep your question in question form and not remarks. We have two panelists and that is it. Um, First of all, a lot of times have been asked a lot of questions. That's not your question, but a lot of people ask about oh, ruling out use of military force. Listen, the United States has a right anywhere on this planet to act in our national security interest, especially if American or American lives are threatened. That's the first thing. And just understand, it's not unique to Venezuela. Anywhere on this planet where our national the security interests are threatened and or Americans are threatened, the U.S. has a right to react to that. And, and that's, that's no different in the case of Venezuela. Number two, it's not my decision to make. I'm not the commander-in-chief. I can only echo to you what the president has told me personally and what the, his administration has said publicly and repeatedly, and that is there is literally no option off the table. Uh, with regards to what this government, uh, this administration is willing to do to see this through. For example, a humanitarian corridor and called upon the international com uh, community to consider that. As far as the next steps, my number one and number two priority right now are getting food and medicine to people who are starving to death, to infants who are dying in hospitals, to people who are waiting for HIV AIDS medications and antivirals that if they don't get, they will die. And that's being blocked. That's our number one priority by every way possible, and to continue to call attention to the global community about how these you know, criminals are standing in the way of that being delivered. The second is to continue to find ways to support the, uh, the legitimate government of Juan Guaido to get the resources they need to begin to, to frame out what a recovery plan is going to look like for Venezuela's future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.